Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Now today we're going to continue our short series on the liturgy of Nathan Oakley and the canons of the flat earth. In our last video, we had a look at his claim that you cannot measure an angle next to a curved adjacent and showed that that was clearly untrue. Then we went through some of the characteristics of science denial and showed how he was demonstrating them in his strategy to promote this to his followers. Today we're going to continue with a slight tangent, and that is during that episode, Brian's logic brought up a conversation that he had with Wolfie6020. Brian's claim was that Wolfie was mistaken about something called relative wind, and we're going to go over that segment in this episode. So let's cue up the music and get going. So let's have a listen to Nathan Oakley and Brian's logic discuss this concept of relative wind in his conversation with Wolfie 6020. And I'll just pop out and pop back in when I have something relevant to say. It's not exactly on the sextant, but it's on angles, right? I've had Wolfie in the past few days, right? They all have angle issues. I've had them tell me, when I've asked them, I said, right, what is the plus three or four degrees of the nose of the aircraft above? He says, it's a thing called uh, uh, relative wind, I think it is, if I remember the phrase correctly. Uh, it's just, uh, it's above the air that's coming straight at him, basically. That's, that's what he's saying. He says, I don't, I don't address or use horizontal at all. <laughs> I said, how do you know what pitch you're at? It's whatever pitch is above the air that's coming straight at me, basically. They just, he's just, like, I know I can look online at anything to do with the angle of attack in aviation. And every one of them uh, will stay three to four degrees above horizontal. But he's denying horizontal exists when he's in his airplane. Now, let's see if we can answer this question about something called relative wind. Now, if you look right down here, we have a little Cessna, and it's flying through the air. The relative wind striking the wing is coming from this direction, and the angle of attack of the wing is relative to the relative wind. Now notice as the airplane noses up a little bit, the relative wind does not change, but the angle of attack does. Now this black box up here is something called an angle of attack meter. At the bottom here, you see the green bar. That means that you're on a cruise flight angle of attack. Here, the angle of attack is considerably greater. Now here you're running into a situation where you have a very high angle of attack relative to the direction of the relative wind. And then as you continue to climb, the relative wind and the angle of attack is very high to the point that you're going to start tearing the airflow off of the top of the wing and you're going to stall. That is the purpose of an angle of attack meter, which is what you see here. Here's a question for you. If you stall the aircraft at this position and it starts falling straight down, what is the direction of the relative wind? Well, the direction of the relative wind will be from this direction because the aircraft is falling straight down. The way the wind is hitting the wing is coming from this direction. Now the reason that it's normally described in this manner where the relative wind is coming from in front of the aircraft is this is the way an aircraft normally flies. But obviously Brian is getting confused with the direction of the relative wind versus the horizontal. There are times that the direction of the relative wind can actually be on the vertical if you're falling straight down. The purpose of relative wind is to determine the angle between the cord of the wing and the wind that is hitting the wing as the aircraft goes through the air. But let's listen a little bit more. I know what he's saying. What he's talking about is what I think called, if I remember what it's called, relative wind, right? But relative wind is, is your horizontal. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's a horizontal. Like airplanes have to fly with the nose a couple of, uh, they fly well with the cord line of the wings above horizontal, which brings the nose above horizontal to go in a horizontal. They can't go in a horizontal without flying with the nose and the, with the cord line. And obviously the nose has to follow the cord line above horizontal. They can't fly horizontally without that. And that's why they have 
the nose above horizontal. But Brian. Woodfi is denying... I just want to say this, okay? Woodfi is denying that horizontal exists when he's up and he's out there. Now, once again, Brian is confusing his terms. What Wolfie was talking about was the relative wind in reference to the cord of the wing. That has to do with the pitch of the aircraft, and it has to do with the stall characteristics of the aircraft. It has absolutely nothing to do with the horizontal relative to the surface of the earth. That's the point that Wolfie was making, and Brian misinterpreted. So once again, the relative wind has nothing to do with the relationship of the airplane to the surface of the earth. It has to do with the net direction of the wind that is hitting the wing of the aircraft. But now let's see how Brian tries to change this around to make Wolfie look like he doesn't know what he's talking about, when in reality it's Brian and Tenth Man and Adam Meekins that are absolutely clueless. Well, Brian, what, what's the purpose of uh, all the instrumentation on an airplane when you can't see outside? Well, for example, the, gy the, the gyro and all the other things that shows where you are and if you're tilting or not tilting. What's the purpose of those things then? Yeah, the attitude indicator. What's the purpose of that? I mean, I mean, does that not reference horizontal? I mean, it's, what's the purpose of anything? I mean, if you're not, if you're going to pretend that horizontal doesn't exist when you're in your airplane, what is the purpose of anything? You may as well turn off, you know, get rid of all of them. You know, put, put, put tape over them so you can't see them. Now, what we're seeing here is poor scientific reasoning, which is characteristic number four of science denial. Now, what Wolfie is talking about specifically is this, and that is the direction of the relative wind striking the cord of the wing. It has absolutely nothing to do with the relationship of the aircraft to the ground. It has to do with the direction that the wind is striking the aircraft as it flies through the air. Because Brian doesn't understand this, and none of the other panel members seem to understand it either, they're confabulating relative wind with horizontal. And when Wolfie said that relative wind isn't related to horizontal, they're all now saying that Wolfie denied that horizontal exists. And if you deny horizontal exists, your instruments in your aircraft are meaningless. This is the ridiculous argument that they're trying to put forward. Well, we got a big problem there because in an airplane with a bubble section, you're getting horizontal. And they're saying to the pilot, keep the plane steady while I do this. And the navigator has to do it over two minutes because the plane is bobbing a little bit. And over two minutes, they get, uh, every, I think it's every 10 seconds, it takes a, a reading. And then they culminate all those readings and get the average because the, the plane can be hitting rough air. But that's all about horizontal. So if they can get a sextant with a bubble to be horizontal, you mean the plane isn't? Now, once again, you have, I think that's 10th man, trying to sound smart because he read a sextant book once. Unfortunately, reading a book and understanding what the book is telling you is not the same thing. And here's a great example. So with a bubble sextant, the way a bubble sextant works is that it measures the zenith or the vertical angle. And I've demonstrated this a number of times. Now from this vertical line, you draw a 90 degree line to your horizontal. The interesting thing about the A12 bubble sextant that I have, for example, is that I can establish this vertical line, I can measure the angle to the sun, and then the sextant itself will draw a 90 degree angle to its vertical and give me the degrees that I need for these two angles. No dip angle correction is required because you're not measuring from the horizon of the Earth, you're measuring from the vertical. Now, this is a demonstration of characteristic number three of science denial, and that is promotion of fake experts over real experts. Wolfie is, by definition, a real expert in aviation. He's an airline transport pilot, which is the highest level of pilot you can be. He flies on a daily basis, practically. I think Wolfie understands aviation and how relative wind, cord angles, and the instrumentation of his aircraft works. So simply because he says that you have to take, you have to fly straight and level and then take several readings and average them, while that is correct, he clearly doesn't understand how those readings are obtained, nor what to do with them. So let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> yeah, but, but this is the thing, you may as well just stop looking at your instrumentation altogether. What's the point? If you're going to pretend horizontal doesn't exist, then you just, you know, you just 
play playing with a deck of cards that you just threw up in the air, like. Well, like, that's the whole, how can you do that? Well, that's the whole point of the sextant in an airplane. It's some of them have a, a vertical bubble and then also the horizontal bubble, so that you can get them all lined up, so that you have your ninety, 90. basically. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, and right. you know, it is. Chat, chat, chat. Didn't Charles? Uh, sorry, John. Just one second. Didn't Charles flat out Matt? Then I hear him hear that he agreed that that just creates a horizontal, and it's a bubble level, so it's a level and horizontal. According to Charles, are now the same thing. Yeah. But yeah, you know, they all need to have a conversation with each other, a massive group conversation, because none of them can get in line with the person next. Well, this is what I was. What saying happens when you're arguing about or? Yeah, John, and that's what we were talking in the pre-show when Righteous brought up uh, the the back and forth he and I had with Nathan, and that's you know they we the Sexton killed them, and now they're lying about how Sexton works, and that's the arguments are on that, and they're just m- being made to look foolish. I mean now now they say you can't have a horizontal in the airplane, but on Earth they don't want you to have dip correction to uh, the horizon, so they say, uh, no, it's really the horizontal angle on Earth. Now, he really seems very confused about this issue, so let's see if we can clarify it. So right here, we have an airplane flying above the surface of the Earth, all right? We have a bubble sextant, and that bubble sextant has got a spirit level in it that determines this vertical line to the zenith. Now, the bubble sextant, once it's established this vertical, draws a 90 degree angle at our level to get a horizon level from our altitude. Then what we do is we measure this angle right here. And it conveniently, and just by convention, the sextant reading will read this angle, which is the angle from our horizon to the celestial object or the altitude. This is very similar to an astrolabe. An astrolabe establishes this vertical line And then by using the Adelaide, we find this angle right here. Al Biruni did exactly the same thing when he was on top of his mountain. He established the vertical with his astrolabe and then used the Adelaide to measure the dip angle down to the horizon. Two uses, same concept, both of which mystify Nathan and his crew. But actually, their confusion amuses me slightly, so let's go ahead and continue and see if you guys can point out the errors in reasoning, characteristic number four of science denial, that they're invoking. If Wolfie is really a pilot, I mean, he might be, I don't know, I couldn't imagine him walking into another group of pilots and telling them that horizontal didn't exist. They would laugh him out of the room. Yeah, he only does it here because he is a pilot more than likely. It's just that he lies over here but he can't do it, like you said, with his compadres. Well, the thing about it is, is that the Charles Flat Art Math did agree that the bubble section creates a horizontal, right? It creates a horizontal, because um, that's what it does. So according to Wolfie, like, w- that horizontal, I mean, that would mean that the bubble section could be pointing down, up, at, at any, I'm going to say the word, angle, you know what I mean, in accordance to his airplane, because horizontal doesn't exist in his airplane. So once again, we're dealing with poor logic, and this is a logical fallacy called poisoning the well. They're trying to mock Wolfie, who is an actual expert in this field, and promote their own ideas by misinterpreting what he said using what's called a straw man fallacy. What they're doing is they're changing his argument, which was that relative wind has nothing to do with the horizontal, and we've shown that. And they're trying to make that into Wolfie saying that horizontal doesn't exist in an airplane. And then they're arguing against this argument that they created. They're not discussing Wolfie's argument. They're arguing against their own argument. And quite frankly, their argument is ludicrous. And by the way, as a pilot myself, I know exactly what Wolfie's talking about, and he is absolutely correct. The knowledge deficit is not on the part of Wolfie or other pilots. The knowledge deficit is on the part of Nathan and his panel. This is what happens when you don't fact check things or you don't talk to people who actually understand them to gain a better understanding yourself. I saw an interesting meme the other day and that is that an argument from incredulity does not falsify the argument. It demonstrates that you have more to learn. Well, Brian, Nathan, 10th man, Adam Meekins, 
you have a lot more to learn before you try and overturn a paradigm that you don't understand in the first place. So we, when someone establishes a horizontal with a bubble sextant in an airplane that he's flying, I mean, that horizontal won't be in line with what they call relative. I think the name is relative wind. It won't be like parallel with the ground. Or any, or like it won't be like par, parallel with the direction of the airplane. But the airplane will be going in any particular direction in any picture. It not matter because there is no horizontal. Now, one thing that I will do is I will give credit where credit's due, and that is that Brian is absolutely correct when he blurts out that the horizontal in an aircraft is not related to the relative wind. That's absolutely true. He doesn't understand the implications of that because he doesn't have any idea of the difference between relative wind, horizontal, or how aircraft behave in flight. It kind of follows the old adage that even a blind squirrel gets a nut once in a while. And I just wanted to give him some credit for that. This, this argument is much tighter than that. When the navigator in an airplane is using a bubble sextant, the pilot... No, no, is you're, you're, missing, you're missing what I was saying. No, I, I agree point. with you. I what I'm saying you. is, how could he use a bubble sextant in his airplane and the, the, the bubble be going, uh, like the sextant create a horizontal in the same direction as he's flying? If he's not... Going if he if 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 pitch has nothing to do with with angle with no, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with you and validating your point. Uh, so the navigator is going to tell the pilot, "Okay, I'm going to do sex and reading." What do you think the pilot's doing? Keeping the airplane level and steady as possible for two minutes while he takes those multiple sights. Now, once again, we have a slight tidbit of truth here, and that is that when you're taking a sextant reading from an aircraft, ideally you would want to be in level flight without putting extra forces on the aircraft to give them the best reading as possible. However, barring those extra forces from being in a turn or being in a bank of some sort, your vertical is dependent on the vector of gravity straight down to the ground beneath your aircraft. It has absolutely nothing to do with the pitch attitude of the aircraft itself. It has absolutely nothing to do with the direction of the relative wind. It has nothing to do with the instruments on the flight deck. It has to do with that bubble responding to the vector of gravity. And from that, it gets a vertical. And from the vertical, the sextant draws a 90 degree angle to have a horizontal to measure the angles against. But it can measure it against the vertical as well. Like the whole point is that the reason the airplane flies at a pitched up angle is so it can fly in a horizontal straight line. That's the whole, that's, that's how they fly. Well, I'm never flying with Wolfie. Well, you just had to have that last dig in at Wolfie, um, suggesting that you wouldn't fly with a professional pilot questions his competency as a pilot. Uh, quite frankly, that would be considered slander and libel. Be very careful about what you do, guys. You know, if you want to have an argument about your narrative, that's fine. But watch the personal attacks. So with those words of wisdom, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again very much for stopping by. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Otis, Little Missy, and I do appreciate your support of the channel. So please consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. It really does help. And we've got some exciting builds and projects coming up in the near future. So until the next time. Take care, my friends. Bye.